I'm going to give a short exhortation uh, about the Ephesian family. And uh, this book of Ephesians was a great masterpiece of the Apostle Paul. And in there, he lays some seeds for the perfect family. And when you plant a seed and it's in the right ground and it's water, it produces what's planted. And so I'm just going to read um, a short portion of scripture. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet in respect to God's word as we read a portion from Ephesians 5. And I'm going to read verses 24 and 27. And then I'll slip across to chapter 6. So Ephesians 5, verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And then chapter 6, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And finally, I'm slipping down to verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. So my title, Alan Ellie, is The Ephesians Family. And I couldn't think it more appropriate to have an Ephesians son of God and an Ephesians daughter of God whose lives are under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So may this little message here prophesy over you for your coming days together. Because without the Holy Spirit, what chance does a family have? I'll tell you, Brother Amina. What chance in this day and age, with all the powers of hell being loosed upon the earth? It, uh, uh, I feel sorry for them. It's a battle. So therefore, in order to have this great prize of an Ephesians family, we have to put on the whole armor of God and fight. And be ready to fight and stand and stand and stand. No matter how much comes against your family, stand. No matter what the devil throws at your family, hold on. God will restore everything. God will not take one away. Amen. He'll hold it there. Satan's powerless because this Ephesians family is behind the word. The word I've just been reading here. The word you just promised. In the presence of God, his angels, and this company. A vow you made. And many make that vow and they don't mean it. They'll see how it goes. But you mean it. Amen. I know you mean it. They're going to stick to it. Yes, sir. And God will bless them in it. So we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Principalities, powers. Rulers of the darkness of this world. Invisible. And yet we see the visible effects of those forces upon our society. The enemy today has just about torn to pieces that great refuge called the family home. Satan has got a pulpit in almost every room of every house, the television. And through there, the people come to that pulpit day after day after day. No longer in the evenings, but before they even leave their home, they get a fresh message, a fresh dose of unbelief. Amen. And there, unknown to the congregation, he slips in his seeds of destruction, intent on displeasing God. Seeds of adultery and promiscuity, out they go. 
Seeds of disrespect towards parents, out they go. Seeds of violence and foul language, out they go. And of unbelief in God's word, that's the main one, out they go. He slips them in and he injects them upon his unsuspecting audience. But we see the fruits of those seeds all around us. We see broken homes. We see people unfaithful to their marriage vows. We see newspapers have become like ungodly magazines. Young people are considered abnormal if they don't have a physical relationship. That's just in the last few years. When I was young, which wasn't that long ago, it was considered the other way around. But in a few short years, with that pulpit in the home, it's changed society fast. Abnormal. He's even removing marriage from the structure of our society. Demon powers have ravaged the earth and destroyed the family home. It's not so much anymore having brothers and sisters, but it's having stepbrothers and stepsisters. And I feel sorry for the people. They have not realized that they have been overrun by demon powers, making them do things they later regret, making them say things they later regret. Did you know that demons were once angels in heaven? They rebelled against God's word. There's your fortress. There's your strong tower. There's where you run in there and hide. And you can hear the rain blasting and all the, the storms outside, but you're safe and tucked behind the word. Say amen, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, sir, there's your fortress. And Lucifer was a great angel, a beautiful archangel. He was so beautiful, he thought he was equal to God. Yet God made him. But he thought he knew better than God. Those demons still on the earth today. Amen. And he said, I can build a kingdom more beautiful than Michael's. What was it? Pride. Amen. What was it also? A lie. Amen. He could not do it, but he thought he could. And he managed to deceive one third of the angels with his lie, with a tale that he told, and hooked them stars out of heaven. And Michael, seeing the devastation that Lucifer and his angels was causing in heaven, one day he stood up. He said, enough is enough. He drew his sword and he cut the devil to ribbons and he kicked him out of heaven. Glory to God and down to the earth came Lucifer and those angels became demons. Yes, sir. God bless you. I appreciate that fire. You may be seated. Yes, sir. He kicked them out. And Jesus stood here 2,000 years ago. He said, I see Satan fall like lightning from heaven. That was the same one that kicked him out of heaven, standing on the earth, letting his disciples know he saw that. He did that. And he's doing it again. Where? In an Ephesians family. Hallelujah. Praise God. Christ in your family will kick the demons out, kick the unbelief out, blast him back to hell. Praise God. A fortress. Strong and mighty. My, this don't feel like a wedding anymore. This feels like church. This feels like the house of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, sir. I feel like having a revival here today. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. There's power in here to change your life. To bring a backslider into the kingdom of God. To set you free to know there's a real God. There's a real Holy Ghost. There's a real religion. There's a real I, Jesus. And he'll change your life. He'll put you on fire. He'll take your sorrows and cast them away. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thank you for letting your wedding be used. Look at those tears in her eyes. Oh, do you know Jesus is waiting for his beautiful bride? And the only dress 
that he wants her to be married in is the word of God. Beautiful robe. Holy, holy, holy. The world never got her. Amen. The blood of Jesus cleansed her. Listen, man. You may be seated. Wow. Oh, there's no home more beautiful than an Ephesians home. Lucifer cannot do anything better than that. Husbands love your wives. Wives reverence your husbands. God put the man at the head of the family. And that man had better love his wife. He'd better love his children. He'd better rule with a heart full of love. And she, she's his mate. Amen. She's to help him, to support him, to surround him with support. Encourage him when he's going through the battles. Amen. He gets home from work. She comes and makes him feel happy. She knows his heart is only for her. She knows. Amen. And Al, you know her heart is only for you. For you and you and only you. Yes, sir. Nothing can change it. It was so in eternity. It is so in time. It will be back in eternity again one day. The gates of hell shall not prevail against an Ephesians family. You may be seated. Yes, sir. Down to the earth came Lucifer. And the war in heaven was transferred down to the earth. And there were two little sweethearts, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden, behind the word. You can eat of any tree you want to, but don't eat of this tree. Symbolic language, of course. Yes, sir, don't you touch that tree. You keep that family intact. Here comes Satan, that beautiful archangel now, demon, uh, Lucifer, uh, Satan himself. And here he comes to tempt Eve. The only way he can do it is to get her out from behind the word. Amen. Did God say, you can eat of any tree? Yes, any tree except the tree in the midst of the garden. The tree of the knowledge of fruit and evil. It wasn't an apple tree. It wasn't an apricot tree. It was in the midst of the garden and it was beautiful to look upon and Eve ate the fruit because he pulled it out from behind the word. If we eat that, she said, we'll surely die. Oh, you won't surely die. Lies. You'll become as gods knowing good and evil. And she believed the lie and she came out from behind the word and all of a sudden the weather changed. The atmosphere changed. Demon powers come flooding in. And all they had in that family unit was lost and replaced with toils, tears, funeral service, sickness, swept in. There's where he started. He broke up a family. And now here we come down to these end times. What can he do when he sees an Ephesians family? He'll throw everything against it. But you stay behind. You know better than Eve. You won't come out from behind that word. I know that I know that I know. You're behind that fortress and you know now, you've seen the consequences. You're not going back. For the Bible says the soul that sinneth shall die. Not the body we're talking about, natural death, but the soul, spiritual death, annihilation of the soul. We all survive this death, but there's a second death. And the soul that sinneth shall die, but the soul that has been washed in the blood has no sin. It's the only thing that can take sin off your soul. The blood that was poured forth from Christ's side on the cross. So Eve did not willfully sin, remember, but she was deceived to disbelieve God's word. And so the demon powers today, what is their effect upon the people? Disbelieve the word. See how much ground they've gained around the world. The world does not believe anymore. There's just one here, one there, one there, one there that God can bring out of that to believe the word. Yes, sir. And when you disbelieve the word, in comes adulteries, in comes families being destroyed, in come argument, fussing, fighting. People don't know how to keep the demons out. They fight one another. They get each other's throats. But I know a family where the atmosphere is going to be sweet. Where there's going to be love, forgiveness, kindness, surrounded by the Holy Ghost. Yes, so you know how to kick that out. You know how to say, I'm sorry. I love you. I'm sorry I said that. It takes, takes a real man of God to say, I'm sorry. 
There ain't too many that can do it. But here's one that can. That's right, that'll make the difference. Brother Al, God bless you for your humble heart. A real Holy Ghost gentleman. That's right. So I say it's time for Michael to stand again and to cast every demon out of the family home. Yes, sir. How does he do it? He comes into the believer in the form of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and kicks all the demons out by holy fire. I don't just mean say yes, amen. I mean fire. I mean a hot power baptism from heaven, like on the day of Pentecost. That baptism is still here. And it has the same effects. It casts the demons out. It puts joy in the place of sorrow. It puts power in the face of weakness. It puts love in the place of hatred. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the power that Satan's afraid of. Fire, snakes cannot take fire. You may be seated. Yes, sir. And when he kicks the demons out without baptism, the husbands love their wives. The wives reverence their husbands. Then the children obey their parents. You see disrespectful children, demons. Invisible to the eye, influencing them to cuss their parents. That's this age. How did he get there? Mainly through the television. That's my humble opinion. But brother, God's got pulpits too. There's one here in Reigate Baptist Church. That word of God can go forth and protect the family and keep them from all harm and danger. Yes, sir. The Holy Ghost causes fathers to know how far to go in correction and not drive their children to wrath and anger. Know, you know how hard to push them to keep the spirits off them and in love correct them and be an example before them. That's the Ephesian family. And the Holy Ghost gives you power to keep those vows. Because Satan will try on every family there is. He'll try. But brother, you're behind that fortress. He cannot get past the blood. The bleeding bloody word, he cannot break past there. You want to stand out there and try and try and try. You just wave, hallelujah. I ain't coming, Satan. You can put what temptations you like. I'm behind the blood. The Holy Ghost is in my heart. And my eyes are heaven bound. <laughs> That's the Bible. Living in the believer. That's the pride that's sitting here on my left, full of the love of God, full of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost shining on her face. That's the bride that Christ will marry. You may be seated. The family of believers. Yes, sir. Uh, that Holy Spirit will keep those vows in you and remain faithful, forsaking all others. Keep thee only unto her as long as you both live. Love her. Comfort her. There's going to be times she's kind of frazzled and upset and so forth. Comfort her. Amen. You promised. Amen. And you're going to do it. Yeah. Comfort her. The rest of you husbands, comfort your wife. Don't get upset with her when she's upset. Comfort her. Yeah. You promised it if you're married. Yeah. Keep a promise. Yeah. God keeps his promises. Yeah. He created the world with his mouth. Yeah. Let there be, let there be, let there be. He speaks his word through the mouth in every age. And these two, by their word, have committed in the presence of God, I will. I will. And I declare, they shall. You shall. Yes, sir, I'm fortifying you. I'm pouring fire upon you. Yes, sir, the glory of God shall keep you. We know it. Yes, sir. Honor her, keep her in sickness and in health. Doesn't mean she gets sick. You No, no, you promise in sickness and in health, whatever. No demon can break that love. Death cannot separate you. Not but for a moment of time. Yes, sir. And the Holy Ghost in your heart, then your heart is steadfast. You're going to keep your promises. Yes, sir. Satan will tempt you and say, no, you'd be better off with this one. But you promise to stay with that. That is a lie. That is not your wife. That is a demon in her. Trying to pull you and break your marriage. Stand, son of God. Stand. When you stood all stand, then God will bless you. He'll bless you and fill your home with love and power and the joy that this world cannot take away. Stay behind that word. I'm nearly finished. You may be seated. So your home is a fortress and the atmosphere is peace and love and kindness because it's coming from heaven. All those other powers are coming from down there that make them fuss and stew and fight. But yours is coming from above, passing all understanding making your home a fortress. Yes, sir, to give your heart to him, obeyed his voice, 
You stayed behind his word, and now he sends his angels to drive out the strifes. Amen. The fuss and the envy, and replace it with love. Greater is he that is in you Amen. than he that is in the world. Brother Alistair, he's greater. Sister Elsa, he's greater, the one that's in you. And the love that you have, God gave it to you. From eternity, he gave it to you. Yes, sir, your home shall be a fortress. Your family shall be Ephesians. Your love is eternal. The passing years shall not fade your love, but it shall mature like wine. It brings to mind Shakespeare's sonnet 116. Many of you may know it. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love, which alters when it alteration finds. Anything changes, love continues the same. Or bends with the remover to remove. So the remover, the devil, tried to bend it away. But love won't bend. Love is fixed. Love remains. Love is true like the North Star. Yes, sir. Oh, no. It is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bar whose worth is unknown, although his height be taken. Love is not time's fall. It's not just when you're young, you love, and you get older, and it goes. Not true love. Love is not time's fall, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. He'll cut away time or cut away the looks. But love keeps growing. Yes, sir. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. I think God inspired those words to Shakespeare. So that is what is in your heart, an ever fixed mark. I'm going to finish with words of a great man of God who said the following, Marriage is honorable, but it should be entered prayerfully and reverently. And genuine love for that woman will bind you together forever. What you bind on earth today, I'll bind in heaven for eternity. When you walk down the street yonder, she may get old and gray and wrinkled, but the same love you had for her when she was young on your marriage day, a young beautiful woman, you'll still have it. You may get stoop-shouldered, bald-headed and wrinkled-faced and everything else, but she'll love you just like she did when you stood with wide shoulders and curly hair. <laughs> if it's really God. For you're looking into the time when you cross the river yonder, when you'll spring back again to young men and women, to live together forever. That's God's eternal promise. He said he would do it. Isn't it wonderful to have that confidence? You stay behind the word, he'll put you back young again when you cross over to the other side for all eternity. So we thank God. Let's just bow our heads as we close in a word of prayer. Father God, Lord, it just feels so good to preach on your word, dear God. Father, I thank you to be able to preach, Lord, at a wedding like this, where the groom and the bride, now husband and wife, Lord, have already given their hearts to you. They already, Lord, that Ephesians family coming forth. And Father, may your precious love fill their hearts and lead them on. No matter what storms may blow outside, Father God, they're safely tucked away and secure in Christ Jesus. Lord, and when that day comes, when they leave this earth, they won't be scared. Lord, all fear has gone, been cast away, and they just slip across to another realm, Lord. And there, Lord, according to your word, they're made young again. Lord, bodies earthly, terrestrial, and bodies celestial. Still the body, but oh God, in the prime of youth, never grow old. The real believer doesn't have to worry about creams and lotions and pills and stuff. No, they grow gracefully. The Holy Spirit is their oil all over their face, joy, happiness, sweetness. Knowing they've passed from death unto life. Eternity lays before them, great joy unspeakable and full of glory. 
May that eternity slip down into their home, Father God, and bless their home, Lord, with the love of God, which passes all understanding. Fill them with joy, Father God. Give them health and strength. And may you touch every heart in this assembly, Lord, this afternoon, Father. If there's a child of yours out there, Lord, that they feel a deep calling to the deep. They know this word is true. Father, may your precious love call them, Lord, to peace and comfort and salvation, Father. We thank you for the joy to be in this beautiful church. And Lord, may you bless the remainder of the day. As the couple go to sign the register, may you bless the specialists to follow, anoint the singers, anoint the words to our hearts, and draw us all deeper and closer to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's give them a hand of appreciation. God bless you with our Sister Annie. You look stunning. God bless you.